वेलकम बैक टू द्रोणाचार्य आई एस यूट्यूब चैनल आई एम डॉक्टर दमन बेनीपाल एंड यू आर वॉचिंग डेली एडिटोरियल एनालिसिस वेल इस वीडियो में हम आज एक काफ़ी इंपॉर्टेंट आर्टिकल डिस्कस करने वाले हैं विच इज़ अबाउट अ यूनाइटेड नेशंस रिपोर्ट ऑन जिनजियांग वेल ये आर्टिकल बहुत सारे प्रस्पेक्टिव से इम्पॉर्टेंट है एज एन इंटरनेशनल इशू एज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट इंटरनेशनल यू नो इशू राइट नाउ दिस इज़ एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक आप इसे जी एस पेपर टू से रिलेट कर सकते हैं अलॉन्ग विद इट वेन यू टॉक अबाउट ह्यूमन राइट्स एंड समवेयर आन द वर्ल्ड द वायलेशन ऑफ ह्यूमन राइट्स इवन देन दिस टॉपिक इज इम्पॉर्टेंट सो वॉट इज दिस यूनाइटेड नेशन रिपोर्ट सो बेसिकली यूनाइटेड नेशन ह्यूमन राइट्स ऑफिस they have released this long delayed and this damning report into the conditions of uyghurs or the uyghurs of the ethnic minority in china uyghurs are an ethnic minority group which you know they basically live in the part of china's northwestern xinjiang autonomous region this report is centered on the conditions of uyghurs and this report details the serious rights abuse against the uyghurs done in the china's xinjiang province and not just uyghurs there are some other ethnic minorities in xinjiang as well and it is said that you know the treatment that is done by china to uyghurs or the other minority group that may account to crimes against humanity so this is a big report a big thing to say that china is you know may be doing some actions which amount to crimes against humanity so now step by step we'll unfold what is what is given in this report but first of all we need to understand that where is xinjiang and why it is important for china so as you can see if this is the whole china this north western province of china is called as xinjiang xinjiang it is a vast area but when we talk about population so it has a very sparse population zyada populated nahi hai vast area but with a sparse population and geographically agar hum dekhe so this is the region jahan pe mountains bhi aapko mil jayengi there are mountains present over here there are forest covers as well and of course there are deserts also and as you can see it is almost you know in the north western side of china ab kyunki xinjiang news mein hai to iski location hamare liye important ho jati hai you should also know ki wo kaun kaun se aise important countries hain jinko xinjiang touch karta hai right so china ka to part hai autonomous china ko to karta hi karta hai china ke sath sath mongolia russia kazakhstan kyrgyzstan tajikistan ठीक है जी दीज आर सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट कंट्रीज जिनको जिनजियांग जो एरिया है वो टच करता है नाउ दिस एरिया इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज जब हम हिस्ट्री देखते हैं तो जो जिनजियांग वाला एरिया है दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ द एंशियंट सिल्क रूट एज वेल जो एंशियंट सिल्क रूट था ये उसका पार्ट था and there are so many nationalities and some of the chinese emperor empires who tried to control this area different cities ko kuch aur nationalities ne control kiya kuch part ko china ke empires ne control kiya and this has been done over the centuries lekin kahani mein change tab aata hai jab communist party complete take over kar leti hai after the 1949s victory 1949 mein चाइनीज सिविल वॉर के बाद कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ चाइना दी कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी दे टेक दी कंप्लीट कंट्रोल तब से यहाँ पे हमारे पास यू नो जो सिचुएशंस हैं वो वर्सन होनी शुरू होती हैं 
Now, if we answer this question, why this region is important for China? So, for that we should understand that this area has a wealth of natural resources. Yaha pe bohat sare natural resources hain. Chahe aap oil ki baat kar lein, oil yaha pe present hai, gas yaha pe present hai, rare earth metals are or the minerals are also present over here. And ye to hua is ki economic value, ki kyunki waha pe natural resources hai. Along with this, it also has a strategic value. Strategic role kis tarah prepare karta hai, play karta hai. It act as a buffer. It is a strategic buffer. And we can also say that with the presence of the Xinjiang, China extends its influence towards the Central Asian countries as well. Westward region mein China ka influence isi region se paunchta hai. Agar ye region China ke paas nahi hoga, toh jo Central Asian countries jo Western Asia hai, waha pe China ka influence soda kamzor ho jata hai. And as we are seeing that yaha pe because Russia is also touching this particular area and Russia is also you know very close to this region. And we are seeing that in the recent years, be it China and Russia, both of these countries, they are aligning their foreign policies. Xinjiang was on the front line of their Cold War rivalry. And it still remains an important, you know, because as an assertion of Chinese influence in Russia's backyard. So, here, Xinjiang's location is also important. Now, Xinjiang kaha hai, ye important kyu hai, ye samaj mein aagya. But is report mein hum baat karne wale hai Uyghurs ki. Uyghurs. China's, sorry, Xinjiang's Uyghurs, they are very closely related to Kazakh and Kyrgyz. Because abhi aap yaha pe dekho na, Kazakh bhi yaha pe touch kar raha hai, Kyrgyzstan bhi touch kar raha hai. So therefore, the Xinjiang's Uyghurs, they are very closely related to Kazakh and Kyrgyz and they are predominantly Turkic Muslims. And they are culturally, religiously and linguistically, they are distinct from China's dominant Han ethnic group. China may Han ethnic group dominate karta hai. But when you look at the Xinjiang's Uyghurs, they are more related to the Kazakhs and the Kyrgyz, there are Turkic Muslims and they are culturally, religiously, linguistically distinct from China's dominant group, Han ethnic group. Now, when we see the history of Uyghurs, so we see that Uyghurs, they have established two short-lived independent governments. Xinjiang mein Uyghurs communist party ke aane se pehle, those short-lived independent governments established kar chuke the. Lekin jaysa ki humne pehle kaha, communist party ke aate hi kahani mein change aata hai. And then they face the repressions under the communist rule. Particularly, 1966 se lekar, 1976 ka jo time tha, that was very violent. And we can also call it as a cultural revolution that was basically. And this cultural revolution, this led a deep animosity in the Xinjiang towards the government. And this kind of aggravated further when Han ethnic group started to migrate in the Xinjiang region. And they started dominating their political and economic life. Han ethnic group here और वहाँ पे उनके political और economic life में Han ethnic group जो है ना का dominant ethnic group है वो अपनी domination show करने लगा लेकिन जब हम Uyghurs की बात करते हैं they have this desire of self rule and this their desire of self rule was endured and it was nurtured by the resentment against the heavy handed Chinese rule and against this Chinese rule a protest movement began in 1990s but again it remained at a very low level because of you know until 
this entire anger exploded in 2009's riot. And this happened in Xinjiang's capital of Urmiki. And it almost left 200 people dead in that riot. The most violence followed in Xinjiang, it prompted Chinese leader Xi Jinping to order a massive crackdown starting in 2014. So this was the history of Uyghurs. Now coming back to the report, if we talk about the major highlights of the recent UN report, Xinjiang ko lekar, Uyghurs ko lekar kya United Nations Human Rights Office se report jo hai hai, kaun kaun se points ko address kya kya hai and isi lekar China ka counter kya hai. Side by side karenge. Sabse pehli cheez jo is UN report mein highlight ki gai thi, that was the issue of mass detention. It was said that, that the mass confinement is happening in the name of tackling extremism. It said that China is enforcing some severe security measures in Xinjiang, especially in the recent years. In what it is, they call it as an effort to combat the separatism or they combat the religious extremism. But as a part of these operations, China has been accused of confining more than 1 million Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities in that you know, network of detention facilities. So there is this network of detention facilities which are called as vocational education and training centers. Isme 1 million Uyghurs or Muslim communities are logon ko is facility may confine kya kya hai. These are the facilities where individuals are sent for de-radicalization and re-education. Now, Iske ilawa, jabam China ka counter dekhenge to ek to ye cheez hoge ki mass detention ki baat ho rahi hai, ki mass confinement ki gai hai, kiske naam pe, ki hum to separatism or extremism ko tackle kar rahe hai. There is one more allegation of abuse. United Nations has said that there is a considerable allegation of torture ill treatment and poor conditions in these centers. Do you vocational educational training centers aapne banaye hain, the allegations are coming of the extreme level of torture, ill treatment and poor conditions over there and that the you know captive Uyghurs they are forced for medical treatments and that can lead that uh, you know lead down to the incidence of sexual and gender based violence. United Nations has also called China to release all those who have been detained arbitrarily in these centers or the prisons or any other detention sites. However, Chinese government says that the vocational educational training center system, this has been significantly reduced in scope and the legal framework and the policies are allowed for the arbitrary and mass detention for Uyghur minorities are still in place. And the policies, the legal framework which are dealing with such kind of mass detentions, they are in place. Now, is it like China ka counter kya hai? Like China claim karta hai ki jo vocational training centers in Chiang mein aaye hai, in ki implementation jo waha pe ho hai, that is happening in strict compliance with the laws. They say this that this is happening with rigorous and legal oversight. Kuch bhi illegally waha pe nahi ho rahe, lawfully ho rahe. And that the training is focused on de-radicalization, their behavior intervention so that we can help these trainees to change their mindset and re-enter the society and rejoin the facility. And according to China, the trainees at these centers, they enjoy personal freedom. They have freedom of movement, freedom of correspondence. They say that trainees, they return to their home regularly. They can apply for leave from the centers as well if they have to attend a personal matter. 
so the clean it is not forceful it is not illegal another thing that this report highlighted was about the religious persecution because this is a united nations report in which it says that the state policies in xinjiang has placed a severe restrictions on uyghurs religious identity and if they show their expression and un report also says that chinese policies are restricting their right to privacy their right to freedom of movement and they even violate their reproductive rights through discriminatory family planning and birth control policies there is this element of coercion and discrimination on the religious and ethnic grounds is going on and it is very evident in labor and employment schemes as well the schemes are implemented over there with an objective that they will elevate poverty and they will prevent extremism there are also some evidences which suggest that there was destruction of the religious sites in this region the author here has analyzed the satellite image and found that there were many religious sites which either appear to have been removed or tampered with this report also notes that china's regulation on religious affair it prohibit holding religious activities in the centers and those who were held the relatives the monitoring group described such centers as prison like reeducation the centers where the inmates are forced to denounce islam and the traditional culture and they swear the fidelity to the ruling communist party ab ise lekar china apna counter ye deta hai ki jo vocational education aur training centers hain they respect all the freedom of religious beliefs customs traditions and trainee can use their minority spoken and written languages here china says that the trainees are in fact covered with pension and medical insurance and they receive free health checkups as well then another issue that this report highlighted was about the issue of mass surveillance because it was said that in the un report that the surveillance of uyghur population in xinjiang should not infringe their freedom and the basic right of an individual united nations also called on china to clarify the reports on destruction of the mosque religious shrines and the cemeteries and to suspend such kind of activities in the meantime and for this china has countered that the state that the installation of security cameras in the rural and the urban public places in xinjiang is consistent with the established international practices the measure is not designed to target any particular ethnic group and the another highlight in this report was about rape and sexual violence it is the report highlights that there are several who spoke about sexual violence including rape in the detention centers that some interviews they were they said they said that they were forced to perform oral sex during interrogation while many were stripped naked some also recounted being subject to invasive gynecological examinations and the report also find that the credible indication of violation of rep reproductive right in this region from 2017 the official figures they show that in this region the birth rate it declined sharply birth rate in 2017 was 15.88 per 1000 and it dropped from that to 8.1414 per 1000 in 2019 but the report however adds that there is lack of official data so it is very difficult to conclude the full extent of the current enforcement of these policies and how these are violating the violation of reproductive rights and to this as well china has countered they said that we have a strong opposition you know and they denied any kind of abuses in xinjiang they call that the so called assessment is ostracized and it produced by us and some western forces are doing this 
It is completely illegal and null and void. This is what China has said to this report. It has further stated that the report seriously violated the purpose and the principle of Charter of United Nations and it also undermines the credibility of it. So, what will be the outcome for China after this? See, now this report which was released, it comes up with that and despite China is having the growing influence in the United Nations, its pressure campaign against the critics of human rights community. There are some observers who say that the tide of criticism be prompted by China to win down the detention earlier than planned to salvage its reputation among the Muslim nations and in the developing world. However, China has maintained its defiance and they believe that its policy have been effective and should continue to de-radicalize certain section. And for this as well, China's foreign ministry rejected the UN report saying that it was orchestrated and it was produced by US and some Western forces and this report is completely illegal and void. China has also said that UN report is a patchwork of false information and it serves as a political tool for US and other Western countries to strategically use Xinjiang to contain China. So we can say that along with Taiwan, Xinjiang will become a contesting point if there is a tussle between US and China. So you should write down this answer as well to analyze this recent UN report on China's treatment to the Uyghurs in the northwestern Xinjiang region. So this is important for this year's mains as well. So that's all for today. Aaj ki video ke liye itna hi. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in my next one. Thank you.